Okay. This is something you commonly use. Uh, I'm sure because some of you has gone through your final year research project or you have probably uh, gone through uh, experiments okay, in the lab and you have to plot this. Okay. This is commonly plot by uh, when you did experiment, you obtain data. Okay. Uh, so uh, there is a signal uh, means from the uh, respective uh, instruments and then you correlate with concentration. So this is what we call as calibration plot. Okay. So why we need calibration? Because, okay, we have Hazira and Shalini Johnny. Okay. So why we need to have calibration? First is for quantitative purpose. Okay. First is for quantitative. Quantitative analysis. Okay. And the second one is you for you to look at the correlation of data. Okay, I will try to explain this one later. Okay, along the lecture. Co correlation among data sets. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully we can uh, go straight to the data first. Okay. All right. So this is an example of data. Okay. So you have to understand the context of data. So when you do a uh, experiment, <clears throat> you obtain data, okay? Let's say here, we are talking about fluorescein. So fluorescein is a fluorescent material, okay? It's a fluorescent uh, chemical compound, okay? And then uh, when you run spectrofluorometer, okay? So I hope that by now, Probably uh, many of you are taking subjects, uh, molecular techniques, right? Yes, bro. Yeah. So I don't know whether you are learning about spectrophotometric technique, for example, fluorescent, but I hope that uh, you have a bit of experience before. Okay, it means that you run UVVs analysis of fluorescent and you can get data. Uh, from the machines, okay? And since this is a fluorescent material, okay? Since this is a fluorescent compound, this is a chemical compound that fluoresce, and then when we measure using a fluorometer or spectrofluorometer, uh, you okay. are going to have, yes? Dr. Mm -hmm. You are going to have readings from the machines. And this uh, reading, the fluorescence reading, is proportional. Okay, the word is proportional. Proportional to the concentration. So, what we can um, try to correlate using a calibration graph is the proportional of concentration, I make it a shortcut, concentration versus the fluorescence signal. Okay, we want to evaluate whether the proportional, proportional means that um, is, is, is uh, how related the concentration of the fluorescein, uh, which is a fluorescing a fluorescent compound, with a fluorescent signal. So we can see uh, basically before plotting the graph, we can see uh, the fluorescent intensity intensity increase with the increasing concentration. So that is our first observation. 
But in order to evaluate how good the correlation between concentration of the compound with the fluorescent properties, we have to plot a calibration graph and get this parameter, correlation coefficient R. Okay, so you, some of you might be familiar with this. Yeah? It's quite standard that we use this. Okay, so we go back to what is calibration graph. Um, most of the time in analytical chemistry, we have to plot this or sometimes uh, it is auto uh, plot auto generated from the machines for example if you if you are using uh, chromatography then you will get this uh, calibration plot automatically from the machine so you just have to extract the information so but at least you know uh, the basic of how um, the calibration is actually working okay so the reason for this, uh, uh, sorry, the reason, uh, what is calibration graph? In calibrating an instrumental analysis method, the typical procedure is taking a few samples, okay, with known concentration of the analyte, okay, and performing the measurements on the sample using the same condition that will be used for the unknown sample. So what I'm going to show you, all right, just give me a moment. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, some of you might be very familiar. Okay, one, okay, you have to prepare standard solutions or samples. Okay, so this is something, uh, mean, meaning that the basic that you do is you prepare the, the salt or the analyte at using a standard calculation and you know the value of the concentration. Yeah, like I have shown here just now. Okay, all right. Means that here, the data, the concentration data here is calculated by the operator, means you. You, you already um, know the calculation. You take from the actual material, weigh and dissolve. Okay. So that's how you know the concentration. Okay. So that is the meaning of uh, taking a few samples with known concentration of the analyte. In this case, fluorescein is the analyte, and you measure it and you dissolve it, you know the concentration because you calculated okay, the concentration. So now, once you have done that, you, of course, measure using the machines, whatever machines that you are uh, planning to do, fluorescein, uh, ultraviolet, spectrophotometer, uh, chromatography, or whatsoever. And then uh, you plot a graph. Okay. So this is what we should be getting for simple calibration graph. Yeah? I'm going to show you. Okay. So this is expected. Yeah? Fluorescence which is the reading from the machines versus the concentration that you prepare, okay? So I hope this one is simple that you can understand because learning calibration plot is actually a practical one. Yeah? means that you have to do the analysis, obtain the signal, obtain the reading and plot it. Okay, so now as we have go through the data just now, we can see there is a correlation, means that there is a, probably a, a proportional. The, the concentration, sorry, the signal of the fluorescence is proportional to the uh, concentration of the fluorescence compound. 
we predict that. But in order to evaluate how proportional, is it a linear trend, how good it is, then we have to plot a graph and do correlation study. So that is the purpose of calibration graph and correlation study. And another purpose, as I mentioned, is for quantitative analysis. So let's say <clears throat> we go back to the graph. Okay, we go back to the graph just now. Okay, let's say I have unknown sample, means that I have a sample uh, which uh, I obtained from, <clears throat> um, because fluorescein, yeah, from natural uh, herbs, yeah. Uh, let's see, natural herbs. And I, I suspect there is certain, certain fluorescein compound in the, that natural herbs, for example, because I, I can't think of a, a sample that have fluorescence. But let's say I have a natural herbs and I suspect there is a, a fluorescein compound in that natural herbs. And of course, I don't know how much fluorescein exists in that particular uh, herbs. So in order for me to know, okay, what I can do is to like treat the herbs, crush it, uh, filter, dissolve it in proper solvents, and also do it uh, the fluorescence, do the fluorescence measurement of the herb solution. So once I get the reading of the fluorescence, then I can do this process what we call as interpolation. Okay. So this is one kind of interpolation that you can do. So let's say, okay, this is the reading of the fluorescent signal from the herbs. Okay, let's say it is, uh, um, what is that, 15, 10, 15, let's say it is around 13. Okay, there is no unit for fluorescent, it's arbitrary unit, yeah? Let's say 13. So if I put it 13 here, I can interpolate the concentration of fluorescein, FL, I just put FL, in the herbs. Okay. So here we have to take care in terms of dilution. We have to calculate back because uh, it's in analytical chemistry. Uh, whatever that we get, we get from the fluorescent uh, from the calibration plots is not absolute. We have to look at at the from the actual sample how much. If we have diluted during the measurement, then you have to calculate back the original concentration. Okay, so whatever that you get fluorescence, and then you do interpolation, and you get the concentration of fluorescence in the herbs. You have to think about the preparation before that you have done. Okay, so <clears throat> there's another way, of course, that you can do uh, without using the interpolation method. You can also uh, put in the the value inside the uh, linear equation. Okay, so what you can do is you put the value of y which is the fluorescent signal, and then you will get the concentration of the fluorescent or fluorescein in the herbs. Okay, so this uh, linear equation is obtained from the calibration plot. Okay, so those actually are calibration uh, quantitative analysis of. Uh, the usage of calibration plots in quantitative analysis. Okay, so any question before we move on? Okay. So remember just now, standard solutions, 
uh, of the samples. And, of, and the next one is the measurement. Okay. And then if you want to evaluate unknown sample, you have to prepare the unknown plus the measurement. And then you have the calculation part. Okay. So basically, these are what uh, is actually uh, the purpose of calibration plot. But the calibration plot itself is something that you have to be careful. One is, of course, you need replicates for each concentration. Okay, Remember the use of replicates. Okay. Why we need replicates? Because each point we have to uh, calculate the standard deviation, standard <laughs> deviation, and then we, we need to plot error bar. Okay, and before that, prior to that, okay, you have to remember about the Q test. When you obtain data, Okay, and then uh, you have to do the, the evaluation of data first before you plot the calibration graph. So we have done the Q-test before, so I'm not going to talk about it. And then we should do replicates of each concentration because we have to calculate standard deviation. We have done that before. And then from standard deviation, you can plot the error bar. So if the error bar, for example, here is too big, for example, then you have to think about repeating the same uh, concentration, okay? Because you cannot have the, the bar too big. Remember about, I have talked about the meaning of data. So you have to evaluate all this first before doing the uh, quantitative analysis, which is, application of the unknown. You have to make sure that you have a good calibration plot before we can do the uh, unknown concentration calculation. Okay? Anyone know who's Kamal? <laughs> okay, I don't know who's Kamal because if I don't know, I will not allow to enter this class, okay? If you know, any of you know Kamal, then please tell me, okay? <clears throat> okay, so question, before we move on to correlation. So how many of you has uh, done a calibration plot before? I I'm sure many. Please just raise your hand. You can just raise your hand uh, online. <laughs> I did it last time when I was in the college. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that you have done before, right? I mean, it's quite you know, like that. Yeah. Yeah, Shalini, yes. yeah. Because when you report your final year project, so whatever, this is something that you have to do. Okay. Now, uh, most of the time, okay, is a linear line, right? When you plot using Excel, I don't know about other uh, software, uh, like some people use origin. So I, I, I don't know about origin. But when you use Excel, you can directly get the linear, uh, sorry, <clears throat> the linear equation. And at the same time, you can get the value of R squared, right? So the value of R squared, what is the value of R squared means? Anyone? One. Uh, okay. <clears throat> we are targeting one, of course, or close to one. What 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 does it mean? <clears throat> if you have close to one or uh far from one, what does it mean? <clears throat> the R squared. <clears throat> uh the meaning of the regression the value of the regression. 
<clears throat> yeah, Ahmad, you have plot this one before. <laughs> what does it mean of the regression value? Uh, Ahmad? Actually, I forget, teacher. Yeah, <laughs> uh, sorry. It's I okay. keep saying, teacher, sorry about that. All right. <laughs> okay. So usually this is uh, by plotting this uh, calibration plot in Excel, okay, uh, you uh, probably can auto-generate the linear equation, okay, y plus m equal to mx plus c, and you can also generate the r squared, okay. r squared is regression, so let's see what is regression all about, all right. Let me jump to regression. Okay. All right. So when our value, uh, usually from the Excel, we get R squared. Yeah, R squared, straight away. So when our value is close to one or minus one, it is very easy to deduce that there is a linear, okay, linear relationship between the X and Y. So you know why in here you, we usually refer to the fluorescence reading and X is the concentration of the fluorescent compound, which is fluorescein. So if we have R squared close to one or negative one because the, the graph can be negative uh, slope or positive slope. It can, it can also, right? So that's why it is close to one or negative one. It shows how linear the relation between uh, the concentration X and the fluorescence reading, which is the Y values. So if the R value is low, okay, for example, you get 0.7, then there is something that you need to do, okay? So the calibration plot is not good enough for quantitative analysis. So it's either you have to repeat, <laughs> you have to look at the data back. Uh, so these kind of things that you have to be very particular before putting the data into the reports because if it is not satisfying, it is not satisfiable, then you have to do something. You have to repeat, okay? So that is our square, yeah? Uh, regression. All right. <clears throat> you can see uh, in, in calibration uh, graph, okay, you targeting for a linear trend, yeah? That's what you want to, basically, this is what we generally want. How good the correlation between uh, the two parameters, okay? Right? So if it is a curve, <laughs> all right? Okay, we get curve, okay? So it's a bit difficult because most, time, most of the time your data is not like, Nice, like this one. It's not always this, uh, this kind of data. Where is it? Yeah, it's not always like this. Yeah, it's not always like this. You have to, if you use the Excel in future, if you haven't used it, you have to get a best trend line. Okay, a best trend line means that the best that fits all the uh, data that is scattered. Okay, so not necessarily something uh, is always a straight line. <laughs> okay, so the points on the plot can contain error. So that's why we do error bar, we do replicates, standard deviation. So if so, what is the best line to describe the relationship between the points? If you are using Excel, okay, you can do the best trend line. Okay, It is already there. I mean, you can just click, click the button and then get the trend line. So you will get the uh, linear equations, regression. So you can actually change uh, the trend line so that you get the best regression. 
Okay, what are the errors and confidence limit? What are the errors and confidence limits of the unknown test sample? What is the limit of detection? So this is the one that we are going to discuss, uh, which is the uh, limit of detection. Okay, so there is a, this is another quantitative analysis from calibration plot. Just now, we discussed about the unknown. You can obtain the concentration of unknown from the calibration plots uh, using interpolation, or you can directly use the linear equation. Okay? It is important that the concentration standards cover the whole range of possi possible unknown. <clears throat> okay. What does it mean here? When you are trying to plot calibration plot, okay, you need to decide what range of concentration that you want to study. Okay, let's say, okay, you from your reading, you know that the concentration of fluorescein in that herbs will be around part per trillion, for example, or part per billion, <laughs> for example. Okay you know from your reading, there is a possibility. So you need to design your analysis, okay, the data, the concentration that you need to prepare for the calibration plot construction has to fit that area, okay? So it has to be in a range of part per trillion or part per billion, okay? You, you have to do that, yeah? It has to. You cannot like prepare in very high concentration, 100 part per million, okay, uh, until 200 part per million. And yet when you do the unknown sample, the unknown sample has only part per billion level or part per trillion level, which is not <clears throat> suitable because you cannot get a good uh, unknown concentration from that calibration plot. Okay, so you have to do... Uh, you have to make sure that the concentration of the standard samples or standard analytes cover the possible of the concentration of the unknown. Usually we know from the reading. Okay, So this is so that the concentration of the unknown is determined using interpolation instead of extrapolation. We can do extrapolation, but it is not encouraged. Okay, We can do extrapolation. It means that we predict <laughs> the calibration we extend the calibration plot but usually sometimes it's not going to uh, it's not really accurate so interpolation <clears throat> means in the scale of the graph is much better a value of blank concentration must be included of course okay means that uh, there is no uh, fluorescein in that sample, so you have to run control, okay? Typically, the signal is plotted on y-axis, okay? Means the fluorescent is y, whatever reading that from the instrument is y-axis, and the concentration, which is the independent, means that you prepare it, is on the x-axis. So this is called independent parameter, <clears throat> the concentration, whereas Y, the fluorescent signal, is dependent parameter. <clears throat> the error considered then is typically of the signal. The, okay, yeah, hopefully your preparation of the analytes are good, so does not contribute a lot of errors, but the error probably from the machines, okay? So the error on signal is not negligible, of course, from the machine. It has normal error of distribution, okay? Uh, yeah, that's why we have data treatment. We have um, F-test, T-test, Q-test. That is on the data first before you <coughs> calibrate, uh, do the calibration plot. The magnitude of random error of the signal is, is independent of error for concentration. In practice, this is usually not true. Understand, understandable, because we still have errors during the preparation. Okay, that's why you're going to the lab, some of you probably. Uh, you're going to use micropipette, 
uh, analytical balance. So if you are measuring a very small amount of solution, then you need to use a proper micro pipette and uh, uh, the balance also must be significant uh, for decimal points. If you are measuring a very minute samples but using um, a two decimal points analytical balance, then it's not going to be accurate. So the, the, the instrumental setups has to suit the uh, accuracy of the samples that you are do, uh, going to analyze. Okay, I hope that you understand when you're talking about preparation because we're not doing lab work here. But the tools that you're using, micropipette, for example, and the balance, suitable and the balance is very important. <clears throat> so typically, the trend is the median line, and this is the uh, <clears throat> linear equation. So of course, I'm not going to talk about the method pentacle. Uh, they are also non-linear. They are also non-linear um, calibration, which I'm not capable of talking. There is non-linear. Yeah, there is non-linear calibration. But I'm not used to it, and I didn't use it. But most of the time, I use the linear equation. All right, so I'm not capable of talking about non-linear. Uh, calibration. All right. So now we go to the formulas, which is boring. <laughs> okay. So remember about the correlation just now, the value of R. Okay. <laughs> R. Okay. So if you want to calculate using a formula, then you can do from the data. Once you get the data, you do the data calculation so you can calculate the r or if you're using excel you can straight away to get the value of r squared so from there you can evaluate whether your calibration is good uh, suitable for uh, quantitative analysis or not okay uh, so these are steps by steps that you can do to to calculate so we have a data already uh, so no, this is the, the steps. So it's not that difficult. If you're using Excel, uh, no worry. <laughs> okay. And then uh, here, we have some errors. Uh, because I'm referring to GD Christian book, this is not discussed. Uh, um, this subject is actually taught by someone else last semester. And the slides are prepared by the previous lecturer, and he referred to a different textbook. So that's why you have uh, you observe discrepancies between my teaching and the uh, some uh, information in the slides. Okay, so I straight away using uh, G D Christian. I will show you G D Christian after this. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm not going to discuss this because I I don't find it in GD Christian. Okay. Uh, but here uh, there are a few things. Let me clean this up. Okay. So uh, here, when you already plotted, um, I hope, uh, because here it is not shown on the error bar. So error bar is very important. Okay, you need to have replicates in error bar. So here you have limit of detection, okay, which I'm going to discuss now. What is limit of detection? In quantitative analysis, limit of detection is very important. Uh, you have, just now I have mentioned about inter interpolation. You can see that interpolation, it is within the range of concentration that you prepared. It is not outside. It is If it is outside, it's extrapolation. means that you extend the, uh, the, the, the line uh, beyond the concentration that you have prepared. And usually it does not, Correct because sometimes, because if you don't you don't do you don't know the correlation. Sometimes the reading can be 
not, uh, not linear anymore after certain concentration. Okay, so that's why you don't, it's not encouraged to do extrapolation, but you do interpolation. Okay, so now we focus on limit of detection. So before we don't focus on the, the, the meaning, but this is how we calculate limit of detection. So YB, so let's look at what is YB. So YB is, is alpha, <clears throat> okay? And alpha is intercept. You can see that alpha is intercept, right? I hope that you can see that. <laughs> so alpha is the intercept, YB. So plus three beta, okay? Mm, so beta is actually, Okay, this is alpha, and this is three beta. So beta is actually standard deviation of the uh, smallest concentration of the prepared concentration. Okay, so uh, I don't. Okay, let me let have a look at the data. Uh, data back. All right. Oh, this one is the same data. Okay. So where you prepare the smallest concentration, okay, you can see here the smallest concentration is two uh, picogram per mil. P okay, picogram per mil, two picogram per mil. So when you do replicates, you are going to this uh calculate the standard deviation, okay? So the B one, okay, this one is actually three times uh, beta, okay? So beta is the standard deviation of smallest, uh, <laughs> Call it concentration. Okay. Okay, so from there you can calculate limit of detection. So what is actually limit of detection? I hope that I have it here. Uh, uh, all right. So limit of detection is defined as the concentration of the analyte that gives a signal that is significantly different from the blank or background signal. So meaning that how low, okay, uh, that the, the calibration plot or the minimum amount of fluorescein, for example, in that compound that can be detected. Okay, so you can see is, uh, if there is a significant difference of concentration reading uh, based on fluorescent compared to blank or background signal. Okay, so let's say if you are developing a determination method for glucose, remember about the information or the examples that we have learned before. So you need to know your developed method, okay, how low that it can detect because it's about sensitivity. Okay, so easy to understand is because we have gone through COVID before. If you choose to have strips, yeah, uh, rapid test kit, you know it's not sensitive. Meaning that if you start, if you just start to develop COVID, and then the viral load is very low, if you use rapid test kit, it might not be detected on the strips. It might give you negative reading. Unless your viral load is very high, probably after two or three days, then your uh, virus uh, can be detected on the street. So that is sensitivity. So limit of detection is about sensitivity. How low <laughs> the method that you develop, okay, how low it can detect the analyte. Okay. All right, so I hope that there are others actually. There are other ways. It's not this is only one formula, but there are other formulas that I can use. 
uh, to calculate limit of detection. So this is the common one, but there are others. Okay, so don't worry, it's not just one formula. There are other formulas used to calculate limit of detection. <clears throat> okay, right. So you can see that limit of detection, uh, you can calculate uh, from one, uh, from the formula, and uh, the, the linear formula, okay, y go to m x plus c, because you need the intercept. This is the value of the intercept. And then you can calculate from the standard division of the lowest concentration, which is the beta. This is alpha. So LOD is equal to alpha plus 3 beta. Okay? So, in, I mean, you can do that without the calibration plot. Okay? So one last one uh, for this first hour is standard addition method. Okay, I'm just going, because this is very important uh, method in constructing uh, calibration plots. So I'm going to discuss a bit, right? Let me <clears throat> show you the standard addition method first. Right. <clears throat> Just a moment, yeah. All right. Uh, I hope that you can see the new slides. Okay, the new slides. Uh, just to explain to you what is standard addition method. Okay. Um, remember about the preparation of the standard calibration curve just now. You prepare the concentration of the analytes, you know, and then you run the fluorescence. So here I have absorbance, yeah, instead of fluorescence. But in standard addition method, okay, why we have uh, what we call as standard addition methods because uh, it's not always you prepare from standard chemical reagents. I hope by now that you know what is chemical reagents. Chemical reagents means that you prepare the chemicals from the bottle, you dilute it. Uh, there is no matrix. Matrix means that uh, you prepare in standard solvent, whether you use water or a mix of organic solvents. So those are very clear. But let's say you need to uh, work with uh, blood matrix, okay? Because let's say you are considering glucose in blood or you are considering uh, toxicants from waste, from industrial waste. So you know that the real sample the unknown sample are going to have are going to be in this different matrix are going to be in a different matrix of the standard prepared analytes matrix means that the condition of the samples okay so standard addition must be used okay whenever the matrix matrix is the condition the the situation <laughs> of the samples whether it is in blood, whether it is in sewage, whether, whether it is in the waste, which is, for example, has high pH, low pH, whatever. Whenever the matrix of a sample changes the analytical sensitivity of the method, because it's going to affect, the, in other words, the slope of the working curve for standards made with distilled water is different from the same working curve. So we have to consider this. <clears throat> So you can see that uh, this is the difference between a standard uh, curve 
a standard solution that you prepare uh, instead of uh, instead of using standard curve you use standard addition method so i'm sure that some of you are, are very good in this so you can see that, that this is the stock solution means that the chemicals or the analyte that you prepare directly from the bottles from the container all right so for fluorescein for example and then you have unknown sample from the herbs you know the herbs probably is not really clean there is some matrix uh, so you have to uh, add this uh, into the stock solution okay so from here you have to put some unknown volume uh, sorry known volume but unknown concentration so imagine now i'm talking about herbs just now you okay so the herbs also being prepared in certain volumes but you don't know the concentration so just now uh, you don't actually prepare the herb solution when you are preparing the standard solution but for standard addition method you have to do that okay so you can see that the flowers the blue represent the herbs unknown okay and then you use the same volume for all the volumetric flowers so the rest are you just top up with the standard stock solution okay you can see from the from the pictures okay it's very important i show the pictures so that you understand the concentration and volume of the stock solution added should be chosen to increase the concentration of the unknown by about 30 percent i think that one is depends on whether you i mean the, the percentage uh, you have to study that okay uh, because it depends on the metrics <clears throat> So when you plot the graph, you can see that, of course, it's not going to be zero. There is uh, intercept here. Uh, but the, the, the main thing about standard addition method is how you prepare. It is not the same as the uh, simple uh, calibration plot or standard analyte preparation. Okay. So it, that is the, <laughs> the one that... Very important because most of the time we are working with uh, complicated metrics. Uh, the samples are not from clean. You have to imagine that if you take samples from industrial waste, or if you are working with samples from body uh, body fluids, then it's going to have like what we call as matrix effect. Okay, so that's why we have to use these standard addition methods. Yeah, so I think uh, we have covered. Uh, all that so the second hour of course is for you probably to look at different uh, okay I'm going to unshare this uh, different limit of detection okay just So we have covered this, okay? Uh, method of standard deviation. Uh, standard deviation. Method of standard addition. So what you can do is during your break, uh, you can at least have a look at other methods for calculation of limit of detection. And during the second hour, uh, the eight to nine as well, we are going to discuss your uh second assignment and this will be uh, individual all right so you have already the first assignment uh which is due another two weeks i have to extend that and then we are going to discuss the second which is the individual assignment okay any questions before we take a break Prof, just one question yeah yeah uh, there's a lot of uh formulas here mm. so for exams and things like that mm -hmm. are these to be memorized as well no don't worry 
Okay, I understand if there is a need to use formula for final exam. I'm talking about final exam, yeah? Uh, mm. The formula will be given to you in the question, exam question. Yeah? Okay. All right. Uh -huh. I, I understand the, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not young anymore and I understand the situation, right? Okay. Any more questions? Okay, this is going to be very short because it's just uh, one more uh, character based on the calibration plot. So just now we know already how to construct calibration plot. Okay, just do So you have to consider the concentration of the samples. You need to know the, the range of concentration should be suitable to the samples that you are analyzing. So you can use a um, simple uh, standard calibration or you can use standard addition method. I have described to you what is standard addition method. Okay. So once you have done the measurement, you have to do the data treatment first. The one that we have discussed uh, before, all those uh, statistical analysis that you can do before you start plotting. Okay, so from the plot, you can obtain uh, the R squared, which evaluates how good your correlation is. Okay, means that whether it is really uh, proportional or it is not proportional uh, between the concentration and the measurement, okay, the signal. And another one is limit of detection, okay? So this is what we have discussed from the first uh, hour of the lecture. And we also, I also ask you, I'm not going to ask you, okay? But I ask you to look at different formulation for LOD, yeah? Okay, so you can see from the slides, there are so many formulas, yeah? So uh, um, it's best for you to rely on our discussion, okay? Not to really uh, trouble yourself with all the formulas because that is extra, okay? And then uh, all this uh, R squared linear equation, LOD, okay? You you can use different formulas. So formulas is not really important for you to memorize but for you to use and the most important is to construct a good calibration plot because if you do not have a good calibration plot or you start from diff uh, wrong uh, preparation of standard solutions uh, then you're not going to get a good calibration plot and of course, you have to do data treatment before you can construct a calibration plot. And another one is from the calibration plot, you can uh, you, you can do quantitative analysis where you can identify the concentration of unknown sample so this is usually what we are targeting if we are constructing calibration plot because most of the time we have unknown sample and we don't we don't know the content of the concentration the active component that we are seeking for we don't know so that's why we have to construct a calibration plots in order to calculate that 
So just now I mentioned about LOD. Okay, so LOD is just a representation of how sensitive the method that you are developing. Okay, so usually this is for the purpose of comparison between the methods. Okay, so one last one that I would like to uh, talk about regression just now. Okay, so you have understood the value of regression should be close to one, okay? Should be closer to one or negative one, depends on the slope, if you have negative slope or positive slope. So if you have uh, this value close to one or negative one, means that it correlates well, okay? It correlates very well, means that it is proportional. The concentration of the active compound is proportional with the signal from the measurement, whatever, whether you're using fluorescent, whether you're using absorbance or whatever, okay? Uh, this is very important before you can do quantitative analysis, okay? So another usage of R squared is about validation. We have uh, discussed about this term for a few times. Uh, along the uh, our discussion from the beginning. So uh, validation is important steps in doing analysis in the lab because the data needs to be needs to be validated. Regardless if you are developing a new method, totally new method, or you might be just uh, improving. Okay, you change the buffer, especially uh, most of the time you're using a HPLC chromatography technique, which is quite common. Uh, in order to improve the detection limit, usually we change the buffer or the uh, mobile phase, yeah, buffer mobile phase, the ratio, and other parameters. So once we improve or we modify the methods, then it needs validation, okay? So most of the time, validation is achieved by comparing with a standard method. Okay. So when we compare with standard method, or probably we use a standard material, usually uh, we need to do correlation. And uh, this is based my, my experience. What you can do to make comparison is, okay, let's say you are again developing, <clears throat> sorry, detection or determination of glucose, because since this is a very simple uh, example, so that's why I use this. Now you are based on, let's say your method is, this is your method, using non-enzymatic, non-enzymatic uh, approach. Oops. <laughs> All right. Non-enzymatic approach. Non-enzymatic approach, because all this while usually we base on glucose oxidase, yeah? Uh, now they're using the glucose uh, dehydrogenase, different, but, but, uh, we are currently uh, developing non-enzymatic approach. I mean, we're not using enzyme. Enzyme is expensive. So in order for you to validate your detection method, okay, you have to do validation. And of course, after a few sets of data, right? Okay, what we can do is, okay, 
By using the same samples, the same set of analytes, the same uh, sets of samples that we prepare from analytes, you can do comparison by, <laughs> let's say I'm using fluorescence technique. Yeah, let's see, let's see. So we have data, okay? One is from the develop method. And another set of data from the standard method. So in this case, uh, standard method means that it is established method to detect glucose in whatever samples that you wish for. Let's say you're, you're talking about plasma base. Okay. So now once we have a two sets of data and it must be from the same sample, it cannot be from different sample for the develop method. And then you, you use different set of sample for the standard method. It doesn't work like that. Okay. So now, oh, okay, a wrong button. <laughs> All right. So what you can do is to, uh, to plot, okay, you can, you can use Y as standard method, or you can either use actually any uh, Y uh, or X exists, yeah? Develop methods means that the new methods that you are using, okay? Uh, now, uh, the data is both, in this case, let's say I'm saying just now, if I use fluorescent, right? So both data are fluorescence, okay? So the data should be like this. It should be the table uh, fluorescence, but you have two sets. One, your develop method. The other one is standard method, but it is fluorescence. So let's say I got from develop method 0 0.24, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, let's say. And from the standard method, I got from uh, 23.21.22, for example. This is just an example. So these are all fluorescent standard. And then we don't have to uh, consider the concentration or the... Uh, the analyte because we are using the same source of samples. Whatever that you do for, for develop method must be also used for the standard method. So now what you can do is to plot this data. It's either standard methods against the develop method and then you should be getting a linear line with certain R squared value. Okay. So in order to validate your method is good, your developed method is good against the standard method. So if you have R squared one or negative one depends on, the, uh, it should be one, okay? Because we are comparing, there's no negative value. So if it is closer to one, uh, not necessarily one, okay? It if, if it is closer to one, then your method, your newly developed method is good because you have a proper correlation with the standard method, okay? So this is one of the style that you can use to check your newly developed method, okay? All right, so I think that's the last one from me. Any question before we discuss your, it's a simple discussion for your next uh, assignment because I have not detailed out the discussion, the assignment yet, but any question on this calibration, <coughs> sorry, correlation and LOD? <laughs> Okay, if there is no question, then we straight away you uh, go to <clears throat> to the assignment. <clears throat> All 
<clears throat> okay, uh, this one, um, yeah. So I have, as you can see, I have not detailed out the uh, instruction yet. Okay, but this is what you're going to do. Okay, this is individual assignment means that you are going to do that by yourself. And of course, you can discuss if you need to with your friends, but of the the outcome, the 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 assignment shouldn't be similar to your friend. Okay. <laughs> is discussion is fine, but it shouldn't be similar. Okay. So you, again, will be given sets of experimental data. It is, this is going to be from actual experiment. And you will be given a scenario. Means that probably you as a chemist, probably you are um, executive uh, chemist in QC, or you are a researcher that you have to report to somebody, okay? It's a certain scenario will be given in the questions. <clears throat> okay, so the second uh, assignment, of course, it, I, I'm showing the hints here. It will involve calibration plots, validation method, correlation, okay? So you have to do it in a way of uh, the data is, is given to you. You don't have to do any measurement, of course, but you are to analyze the data. Uh, depends on the instruction given. Uh, you have to plot graph. Uh, you have to do, uh, for example, commenting on the, the, the method. You have to do validation, but all the data are given to you. <clears throat> and you can use, of course, basic Excel, but for those of you who uh, use other software, it's also um, acceptable. Uh, we have now Origin, Python. Uh, so it's going to be to, uh, uh, in the term of a report. Yeah? So I hope it's going to be professional reports. So uh, when you, the, the common question that I will get is, is there any format? Is there any limit of uh, pages? Okay, so it does not have to be, but it has to be suitable to the scenario. Okay, so I will give you the data. No, no worry. You have to do the analysis. So it's going to be in Putra Blast by next week, but not not this week okay because it's going to be it's going uh, i need to take some time to prepare the the questions yeah <clears throat> but i hope you understand that you have to do a professional report a professional report depends on the scenario okay so it might be different scenario for a different person but it might be the same scenario for all of you depends on how many that i can prepare okay and then uh, I'm giving you until the end of this uh, half semester, meaning that you're going to have like two assignments. One is group assignment. The other one is individual assignment. And I hope we can finish everything by your uh, mid-semester break, which is, will be in, in December, I think. All right. Okay, questions. This is week four, and then week five, uh, we're going to have the ANOVA and uh, experimental designs. And then we have uh, public uh, holiday on week six, and then we have week seven for your presentation, maybe, or we can just have recorded presentation. And then I'm going to finish. Uh, somebody is taking over after this uh, mid-semester and you're going to have uh, like uh, software related. <laughs> uh, any questions before we end? Everything is good about the second uh, assignment?
Yes, well, thank right, you. Right, okay. Uh, resume share, sorry. Uh, bro? Yeah. Uh, sorry, for the lecture today, uh, inside the, your notes, you have uh, the, the part with